Hello. In this video lecture, we're going to introduce you to the world of healthcare insurance. And this is the same material that's covered in chapter one of your book. I'm going to hit the highlights on this. Please be responsible for reading the chapter in its entirety. And again, one of the things that we talk about commonly in health information is the issue of medical necessity. And what that means is, is that we're linking some sort of service, whether it's a diagnostic test, a lab, procedure, whatever it is, to a actual medical need. So if there's no medical need, we're not going to have the insurance payer pay the provider for meaningless tests. And to give you some examples here on the x-ray, right? If somebody's having shoulder pain, they get a knee x-ray, the provider's not going to get reimbursed because it's not related to the diagnosis. With two, they're going to get reimbursed because the chest x-ray is related to the shortness of breath. In electronic health record systems, sometimes you, you'll have a order for a test and it will have to be linked to a pick list that has the diagnosis on it. Some opportunities in health insurance, one that we're very interested in our program, of course, is the coders. We're applying alphanumeric codes, if you will, to diagnostic statements. In addition to coders, your health insurance specialists, claims examiners who normally have a, some sort of background in health information management, medical assistants to a lesser degree, and other health information technicians. Something we hear about a lot is the term scope of practice. And basically, this is talking about job qualifications, what people do, and how closely they are supervised. So again, we're talking about scope of practice, and you hear this in regards to nursing, you hear this in regards to coding, reception, medical assistants, talking about what specific is their scope of practice. Many medical offices don't have their own coding and billing staff, so they send it out for a service. And that's where the independent contractor and employer liability comes in. An independent contractor is somebody who does contracted services for a group, in this example, a medical practice. And ordinarily, they need to have professional liability to protect them from any liability when they're doing coding and billing. The employer also has liability. The organization has no liability for errors and omissions performed by the independent contract, but they're legally liable for any actions or omissions when they're performed within the scope of their employment. How do we know when somebody's an independent contractor? This is a common thing that's discussed. The IRS, the California Franchise Tax Board, State of New Jersey, and other government agencies are very interested in this because it affects how much state tax revenue somebody's getting. One way that they determine an independent contractor status is to the right to control, which means how much control essentially does the organization have over the workers' activities? How are they paid? What is the job commitment? And what is the nature of the occupation and skills? The Internal Revenue Test Service has a 20-factor test that they apply to it. Uh, they also, California, they require a questionnaire. Uh, and as a result of Recent assembly bills have been signed into law in California. Independent contractors in healthcare are largely going away. And some of the insurance that 
independent contractors and employers need to have the property insurance, workman's comp, bonding, liability that we've covered. And here are some of the organizations and credentials that you see people using for coding and billing. The AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders, has the CPC, probably the most common one, CPD, COC, CIC, CPCP, and many, many others. Medical assistants have the certified medical assisting credential, but the one that we're the most concerned with is the AHIMA credentials, the CCS, the CCSP, for physician offices, the CCA is considered an entry-level coder health information credential, and then the RHIA for registered health information administrator, and the RHIT, which is the exam all of you can sit for once you get your AS and health information. And that's all I have for you. Come back for chapter two. We'll talk about managed care, fee for service, and other concepts in health care insurance.